Good morning. This is Rich Nass here for the latest installment of Five Minutes With. This week we're talking to Jim Carroll, the CTO of Mobica. Hello, Jim. How are you? I'm very well, thank you, Rich. Nice to hear you. Good. good. I'm glad to hear it. So, uh, as I said, it's morning because you are based in the UK. Is that correct? That's right. Uh, I work out of an office just south of Manchester in the northwest of England. Very good. Okay. So that will be the easiest question that I ask you as we go forward. <laughs> okay. So uh, your company is very involved in the testing of mobile platforms. Uh, what would you say from a design engineer's perspective is the biggest challenge that an engineer faces when having to test a mobile platform? Uh, I guess it, it, it depends on it depends on, on your perspective. As, a, um, as an engineer that may be responsible for testing a mobile platform, so the actual handset, the biggest challenge, I would say, is around the fragmentation, the prol proliferation of different platforms. If you're trying to test uh, an, an Android lollipop handset, the, f the behavior that you see on one handset will not necessarily be the same as you see on another Android lollipop handset or even the same, han same kind of handset made by the same manufacturer. So the proliferation of devices, and you can multiply it up quite quickly uh, to va validate that an application works well on one platform or one handset, it can get really quite, uh, quite challenging when you, when you cover a huge amount of handsets. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Okay. So I'm going to shift gears here, and I'm going to ask you a question, and I'm not going to let you off the hook until you give me an answer. If you were starting a mobile platform from scratch, say a, a handheld battery-operated device, what operating system would be your go-to and why? Uh, actually, in my career as a developer uh, some while ago, uh, I, would have I would have liked to have recommended something that I used to work with uh, 10 years ago, so uh, Symbian. That had a fantastic power management architecture in it. However, Symbian's no longer with us, uh, so these days I'd, I'd uh, use a Linux-based operating system. Uh, the reason, reason for doing that is because it's not so much the flexibility in the platform, but the fact that it's all open source allows you to build a customized power management scheme. There, there are plenty of power management schemes available, um, and of course, systems like Android, which are Linux derived, implement their own power management. But if you tried to do something the same, say on Windows, then you uh, then you you don't have access to the source code that you need to make something quite as flexible or at least if you do have access to it, you've paid a lot of money for it. Okay, so let's make the question a little harder. Uh, would you choose one of the commercial versions of Linux, or would you be using a free version of Linux? Uh, uh, <laughs> if I had unlimited budget, I'd start from scratch with the free version and build my, uh, build my own version. However, that's that's really not a sensible design choice in this day and age. So I'd I'd probably uh, I'd start off with something commercial for reasons of stability, apart from never mind the uh, the aspects of completeness. So okay, fair um, enough. I won't push uh, you any further. I won't say which one would you choose because <laughs> I know you don't want to do that. So, so I'll, I'll stop it. That line of questioning right now. Okay. Shifting gears again, um, I often in these discussions ask about um, engineering schools, colleges, and things like that. And one of the interesting questions I always like to ask is, what is the most important thing that they do not teach you in college that you really have to learn on your own out in the field? So I guess that it, it's not very tangible, but uh, the, uh, the art really of being being pragmatic. Engineering is all about the pragmatic and practical application of scientific subjects. Um, and there's, you don't really get a feeling for this until you actually have to do it when the time and cost pressures are against you and the perfect, perfect solution is not always a viable option for, for lots of reasons. Um, I'd like to add another one onto that, which is that understanding the differences with the real world. So something that I, I remember learning a lot about at university, the latest and greatest technologies. Often the things that you learn about at university don't actually happen until many years later 
or in fact fade away by the time they, by the time comes. You know, they don't always make it to be commercially viable. So it's a combination of those two things: um, the kind of pragmatism that you have to learn, and also the understanding that uh, that the latest and greatest technologies often don't make it out into the real world. Okay, I would tend to agree with you that you know there's there's a lag there. Although I think it's getting much better than it was back in the uh, in the old days when I went to college, but uh, okay. Well, uh, I'm sorry, Jim, but our five minutes is up. Uh, that was five minutes with Jim Carroll, the CTO of Mobica. Thank you, Jim. Thanks very much.